Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on part 3 of this Jam Labs tutorial. Now as a quick recap, in part 2 we set up the site-to-site -site VPN components on the Azure tenant. So in this tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is setting up the Windows 2012 RAS server on-premise. That's basically going to be your on-premise endpoint to connect to Azure and allow your on-premise servers to connect to your Azure servers um, in a seamless way. So this tutorial covers that and hopefully at the end of it what we should have is a connected on-premise and Azure solution. Right, let's make a start. The first thing I'm going to do is log on to my router. I've got a number of ports I need to set up and forward to the RRAS server. So as the Azure VPN makes a connection in, it makes its way through to the um, RRAS server. So I'm just logging on to my Virgin Media Superhub. Just logging in. Okay, I'm just going to scroll down to the security section for firewalls. I've noticed on the Virgin Media Home Hubs, firewall firewall protection needs to be set to low otherwise it does start filtering and stopping packets ipsec pass through also needs to be enabled now jumping onto the port forwarding i've already set these up but basically i need ipsec on port 500 and 4500 to be enabled so it's udp ports and they are pointing to the external ip address that i've set up on the rras server sign out of that. Okay, jumping on to the RS server, I'm just going to show you the network configuration that we've got there. So I've got two network cards set. One I'm going to call internal and the second one I'm going to call external. So the internal one will service internal traffic, the exchange servers, Active Directory servers, etc. And the external one is going to be my interface for the VPN connection to Azure. Just jumping back over to the internal one, um, I've disabled IPv6. To be honest, it doesn't really make a difference unticking that box. Um, but the important thing is the default gateway on the internal interface should be removed. Okay, just having a look at the external one. Um, again, best practice advice is to remove everything apart from IPv4. Um, the internal interface is a dot 56 so I'm going to set this up as a dot 57 which is what the Virgin Media Home Hub was going to forward those ports to. Um, default gateway I've set to my default router and the DNS server on this one I'm going to set as the Active Directory Domain Controller. Close all of these. Okay, and that's pretty much the network configuration done. Just close these windows. <coughs> so now the meaty bit. We're going to be installing the RAS server role, and that's just through server manager. It's no different than installing any other role that you've done in the past. So add roles and features, click next past the, the welcome screen. And if you go to server roles, I'm selecting remote access. Click next past that, click next again. So the role features I want to install is routing. And by clicking routing, direct access and VPN is also enabled, which is fine. So there's a whole lot of prerequisites that it needs to install and dependencies. So let's get that done as well. And finally click install. Installation starts. To be honest, it doesn't take that long. Um, so I'm just going to let that finish. It's nearly done. 
Okay, when you're recording a video, these little pauses seem like a lifetime, and we're done. So I'll close that, move over to the top right, and click on the Getting Started Wizard, because there's some additional configuration I need to do. So on this one, I'm going to deploy the VPN only. Let's configure remote routing and remote access. So click next on the wizard. It's got a number of options there, VPN, NAT, VPN, NAT, but what I'm going to go for is a custom configuration. And from this selection, I'm going to need VPN access and land routing. So land routing will allow my servers on premise to talk and route their packets over the VPN and obviously the VPN. Now I get this message saying that Windows Firewall service couldn't open the required ports. What I find is if I click OK, it does actually do it. So I'm just going to ignore this error for the time being and click OK. Let's start the service. Give that a few seconds for it to start. Thinking about it. OK, the service is up. Let's have a look at the network interfaces. So I've got my loopback, internal and external that we did. So now we need to create a new on-demand interface. And I'm going to call this Azure. We're going to be connecting using VPN. And it's IKE v2, the protocol that we're going to use. So you've got L2TP, PPTP, but IKE v2 is what we need to connect to Azure. So this is the IP address of the gateway IP on my Azure tenant. So at the top of my mind, I can't remember what it is. I'm just going to quickly log into the Azure tenant and see what my gateway IP was. So Login. No thank you to saving passwords. Here we are. Just go to the resource, which is VNet1 Gateway IP. And Virtual Network Gateway, beginning with 40. Dot, is, is my IP address for the Azure Virtual Gateway IP. Just make a copy of that. I'm, po I'm, sorry, I'm pasting it in Notepad, just in case there's any hidden characters in, in, in the page and copying it back again. So let's paste that in there. Click Next. Um, root IP packets on this interface, absolutely. So let's add a static root. So the destination is 10, 10, 0, 0, and that's the, the network that I've set up on my Azure tenant. Put in a network mask. I'm going to put a metric of 10. To be honest, on a very simple setup like this, it doesn't really matter. But if you've got multiple routes going in different directions, then it does. Dialect -like credentials, I'm just going to put random here. It doesn't really matter what we put in because we authenticate using a pre-shared key rather than a user account. So there's my demand dial as your interface. Jumping over to security. And I'm typing in the pre-shared key. So in part two, we actually set up the pre-shared key. It's the same key that I need to type in here for the demand dial interface to work. And that is pretty much connected. So I'm just going to enable that. And it's showing us connected. Obviously, it's demand dial. So if a server does try to communicate to the 10.10 .10 network, it will automatically dial. Um, as you're still showing the status of not connecting, and what I found is it does take a few minutes for it to actually show up as connected. So any second now, that's going to refresh to connected. There we go. So it's connected. So right now, my on-premise and cloud infrastructures have now been connected using a site-to-site -site VPN and a demand dial interface. 
thank you for joining me on this one and I will speak to you hopefully soon on the next part where we start installing the Edge server in Azure and making use of that site-to-site -site VPN network that we've just created. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!